Okay, welcome to class one of method writing, and I am Craig Bergman, and I'll be your teacher for the next eight modules or eight classes. A little bit about me, I'm a poet. I'm originally from New York. I grew up, I went to public schools, and as a kid I hated writing. Whenever they gave us a creative writing assignment, I hated it because I always found myself sitting there um, saying I can't think of anything to write about. And it took me until I was in my 20s when I moved to California when I met, met a man by the name of Jack Grapes who's also a poet and he created this technique called method writing. And when I met Jack and I started studying with him I learned a technique for writing that I now use all the time and I find creative writing to be something fun and uh, something very satisfying and nourishing. So I'm going to keep this uh, video really simple because I find that too many videos that I watch as a student are too wordy and too confusing, so I'm going to keep it really simple. What we're going to do in this class over the next eight weeks is I'm going to ask you to keep a journal. And if you have never kept a journal before, because I know I hadn't kept a journal before I did this, think of a journal as a sketchbook for an artist. An artist has a book and they doodle in their sketchbook and then over the course of a time they look back and they say, well, I'll turn that into a painting or into a drawing. And it's a place where they practice. So this journal that you keep is going to be a place where you practice the creative technique that I'm going to teach you. And what I'll ask you to do is if you want to type on your computer that's okay personally I like to write in a notebook but sometimes I write on my phone whatever it is I don't mind just find what's comfortable for you if you are going to use a notebook what I want you to do is Monday through Friday I want you to write two pages a day and the way I'm defining a page is the front and the back so two sides personally I buy small journals so it goes quicker and I feel good when I've accomplished my task for the day. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to give you the assignment today on Sunday, and then when we meet live on Thursday over the internet, you each in this class are going to take turns reading aloud two pages from your journal entry. And I don't want you to edit it, and if you're on a computer and you're writing on a computer, just you know, two pages from your computer. Okay, so the first exercise, it's called one, two, three, don't think, see. And simply, all I want you to do is when you sit down to write, I don't want you to think what to write about. I want you to start in the moment writing what you see going on around you. And even if you're sitting in a room and maybe you're sitting in the same room every time, you sit down to write. Just start in the moment noticing what you see in that moment and not just action but detail and I'll read you a quick example and I also the second part of this is I want you to write like you talk and I'll say that again I want you to write like you talk so when we're in elementary school the way we write is sounds like we're talking. It's very informal and very conversational. And when you get to middle school, then high school, and certainly beyond that, the teachers don't like when you write the way you talk because it sounds a little dumb. It sounds too informal. Now, if you're doing a persuasive essay, you're writing a book report, of course, you have to learn how to write more formally and a little more professional, if you will. But when it comes to the journal, we want to hear your voice. The most important thing I'm going to teach you in, well, one of the essentials in this course is how to find your voice. Because a writer, a true writer, it's all about finding your style. And the way you find your style as a writer starts with the rhythm of your voice. And this is something you'll discover as you, as you go through this class. So an example Oh, by the way, I just want to back up. So, one, two, three, don't think, see. You can write about what you're thinking and what you're feeling and what's going on in your life. And you could write about anything. You could write, you could make stuff up. It could be anything. But practice sitting there, being in the moment, not knowing what to write about, not being afraid of the blank page, 
and just starting with observing what's in the moment. And if any point you start writing about something and you get stuck and you're like, oh, I don't know what to write next, come back to the scene, come back to the moment. What it does is it prevents writer's block. If you've never heard of writer's block, it's when you're sitting there and you're basically saying, I can't think of anything to write about. So this prevents that. Don't think, see. Now the other thing is if you are, I have all kinds of students taking this class. Some people hate writing and their parents want them to learn how to write. They have a lot to say and they're very, they have a lot of things going on in their mind, but they find it hard to express on paper. So writing like you talk, writing what you see in the moment will get your voice going. If you're someone who loves creative writing and you're looking to write stories, we have to get back into finding your voice. That's the most important thing to building a story is having a character with a voice that you can believe. So it starts there. And we'll build on this every week that we do sessions together. So I'm going to read you an example of writing like you talk and just starting in the moment. It goes like this. I'm sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee. This is the best time for me to write because in an hour I have to pick up the kids, and it's always like that around here, rush, rush, rush. I guess if I'm going to get any writing done, I'll have to get up an hour earlier when everyone is sleeping. When I was 16, that's what I did. I took my journal, well, actually it was a loose-leaf binder, out into the yard and I wrote for hours. Well, it seemed like hours. It was probably more like 30 minutes, but I felt like a writer. I imagined that that's what writers did. They sat in some quiet room or in their backyard and wrote for hours, writing a story or a poem or something. No chores, no homework, no nothing. It was all so romantic. Maybe that's why I wanted to be a writer. It seemed like a good way to get out of doing real work. This is an excerpt from the book that this class is based on. It's called Method Writing, and it's by... This lovely man, Jack Rapes. Now, there wasn't much seeing in the moment there. It simply started with him sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee. And then he just had other things on his mind and he wasn't really stuck. But if he didn't know what to write about next, he could have said, I'm sitting here at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee. The fan is blowing overhead and I feel the breeze on my arms. The sun is coming in through the lace curtains. The fan is on, but the AC is broken. There's a heat wave here in California, and I have to call the hardware store later. There's always something for me to do. It's so hard for me just to sit and journal. And, you know, your thoughts and what's going on in your life eventually comes through. But, again, if you can't think what to write about, just write what you see. Now, the writing like you talk, it's not like you're talking to someone. You're not writing to you. To you. It's the first person. But it sounds like someone's talking out loud, if that makes sense. I'm sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee. It's a very simple sentence. Now, not writing like you talk would sound like this. As the defiant day broke, gray and dull, I looked out toward the stark mountains as they leaned against the horizon like drunken elephants and contemplated my next move. That's beautiful writing. It's more poetic, it's more formal, great vocabulary, great metaphor. But no one would talk like that if they were saying these things out loud. So to wrap it up, I hope you're still with me. I did my best to keep this really to the point. Your exercise, if you want to begin today or actually maybe begin Monday, it's up, it's up to you. Two pages a day. Write like you talk. And the exercise is called one, two, three, don't think, see. Start in the moment with what's going on around you. Write about your thoughts and your feelings, or what's going on in your life. Um, but if you're sitting there and you find yourself stuck and you can't get started, write what's going on. Okay. Um, it could be random and all over the place and messy. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be a story. Some people call it uh, free writing, stream of consciousness. One of my students calls it vomiting on paper. It's what I'm introducing you to is the creative process. And there's such a thing as process and product. So process is when you're practicing. 
let's say basketball, you're shooting your free, free throws. And if you miss a free throw, you don't beat yourself up too bad. You just keep working on the technique of your form, bending your legs, holding your elbows in, whatever sport it is, there's a technique. And in your practice, you're focusing on that. So the creative process is just that. You're focusing on, am I writing like my talk? like I talk, am I writing about what I see, you're just getting comfortable putting it all down on paper and you don't care about what it looks like. Now there's something called product. Product is a story that you publish or share, a poem, a song, a screenplay. In the, in the analogy of sports, product will be the game. It matters if you miss a shot and you're, you're tough on yourself. The more the athlete prepares and practice, the more they're in the flow when they're in the game. So the more you practice this technique of that I'm going to teach you, the more you're comfortable when you have to write something, when you really do want to write a story. And also, when you look back over the course of the next eight weeks, when you look back at your journal, you're going to see there is product in this process. But you're kind of letting go of the desire to create something, and you're just focusing on the process over the next eight weeks. So, your parents uh, will have my email, but I'll say it again. It's craig at wordupkids.com, C-R-A-I-G at wordupkids, with an S, dot com. And if you have, and I'll let your parents know this, but I'm telling you directly, if you have any question at any point, if this is confusing, if you're sitting down and you're like, ugh, I don't know what he wants me to do, from today, over the next eight weeks, at any point, you just email me as long as it's okay with your parents. Um, if it's okay with your parents, I'll, they'll have my telephone number if you want to text me and we want to talk in person. Whatever it takes to make this a successful process for you, is um, that's what I'm all about. I'm here for you. I believe that's all I wanted to say, and I'm sure when I'm done with this video, I'll think of ten other things I wanted to share with you, but it'll come up in the live class we do at the end of the week. So... Enjoy, and I'm excited to see what comes out of this technique for you. I know it's going to be a life-changing process, as it has been for me.